Good morning, everyone. My name is Josip Kasik. Welcome to Trading and Review. Today is July 25th, day before the Fed Day. Please take a moment to type in uh, uh, the code. QR code is 09162. Um, so you can have a direct interaction with me. And uh, take a moment to read the disclaimer. And we are going to start by looking at the market. So we have a SPY that has rallied up this morning, but now it's pulling back a little bit. As you can see right here in this area where I'm uh, pointing out to you that uh, we are struggling to go any higher. And why would be the case? Well, tomorrow is the Fed day. So activity that we can do before the fed day is what i'm planning to teach you this morning so we are going to be executing a trade in which we're going to be putting on an s p 500 cash an investment of about 500 dollars if we can buy it anything less than that then we are going to proceed so I just want to make sure that everybody here is interacting with me. I'm going to type hi to all, to all of you who are in the room. And then I know that uh, we are good to proceed. So hi to all. Uh, if you see, uh, interact with me here. So I know that we are good. And uh, I'm going to bring the Finvis here just for a second. You know, this is a... Uh, each of these bars is a 10 minute bars, right? So between the 6.30 to 7 o'clock or a 9.30 Eastern to 10 o'clock, we had the um, gap down, rallied up in the first 10 minutes, filled the gap, paused for a moment, pulled right back down, weren't able to take out the opening print. And now we are up 0.03% on a NASDAQ 0.35%. But what is interesting on a NASDAQ, if you notice here, we actually have a gap. And this gap is possibly not going to get filled. Or when the Fed comes in tomorrow, it will get filled. So this is a Forex calendar, as you can see right here. Today we had a consumer confidence, but tomorrow there's going to be a Fed funds rate that everybody anticipating that most likely is going to be jacked up by a quarter of the percent. So if we are good, I will now bring in the Thinkorswim platform. I'm going to execute a trade in which I will be placing uh, $500 um, for tomorrow so i just want to make sure that uh, i picked the right account here so i'm picking up the 26th and the way how i want to structure this trade is very simple i'm going to fire the trade in and then i'm going to discuss it so if you're currently sitting at 4560 and now just bring this here so i can kind of explain the logic of what i'm doing here so we're going to be selecting what is called a long iron condor. So if you're here at 4560, I can go ahead and buy to open higher price, 4565. And I anticipate initially when the feds make announcement that they're increasing only uh, a quarter that that might be seen by the market maker as old news and i will be then uh, seeing those out of the money um, uh, calls gaining the value but at the same time in case the market goes down i'm planning to trade a put by buying to open 45 55 put and then because i don't want to invest anything more than 500 dollars i'm going to be then selling to open the lower strike price which is 45 50 put so on this side i'm having the bull call spread that is basically out of the money otm and on this side i'm having the bear put spread that is also 
out of the money. While the S&P 500, as of this morning, is sitting at the 45.60. So $5 out of the money to the top side, to the call side, $5 out of the money to the downside. The reason why I would do this trade, because every single time when there's a Fed day, there's a huge movement. We just don't know which direction. So in this case, as long as I invest anything less than $500, and these are the cash secure, and I sit on my hands till the end of the day tomorrow, that is going to be worth $500. So now here's a $6 million question. How much are those buying of the bull call spread and buying of the bear put spread are going to cost me on a single ticket? So let's demystify that by pricing it up. So as I said, we're picking for the one day out, which is tomorrow, 4565 4570 call that should go about 220 so think about it if the other side also costs 220 so that would be together 440 440 dollars subtracted from 500 the most that we can make it's 80 dollars on it so we're going to tuck this away because now we have a correct pricing so let's see how much the 4550 4555 are costing so we're also buying this one and that is together costing me 4540 just like i predicted so i'm sending it at 4540 over here is a 60 dollar profit so we're gonna send it in one time and see if we're gonna get filled so one more time you know what we are trying to do here is very simple we are trying to get filled on an out of the money call and on an out of the money um, I mean, call spread and amount of the money put spread. So one more time, 4560 is what I have written right here. That's what my uh, 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 current price on S&P 500 is, right? Obviously, this is here column for intrinsic. My 4565, which is my long unit or commanding unit, is completely out of the money by zero and look at what they want one thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars isn't that crazy that they want that much but what i'm gonna do here and just change the color in red i'm gonna be selling against that a higher unit so if the price rips to the upside and it comes to let's say i'm gonna just type in here uh, closing price at the end of the day happens to be 45.75 then my 45.65 unit is going to be in the money a uh, whole 500 dollars so the fact that i got filled on it um let me just verify this because i think i heard the ding um let me just see here did i get filled uh for 440 right so i got filled for 440 uh, i will be then able to make a 60 dollar profit on my investment of the 440 dollars mm -hmm. so that might not seem uh very uh, uh impressive right now but when you think about the percentages you know like if you just take a moment here and think about the percentages and what i'm going to do here in a moment i'm going to just bring the simple calculator and divide the $60 profit by $440 investment. And what do we get here? We get a 13% in one single day. And again, be, be aware of it that this particular trade is a trade that requires you to sit on your hand after you execute. So what you need to really do is uh, do nothing. Just wait for the market to come to an end either to the upside or to the downside either of these situations are going to uh, work in our ways as of now nasdaq still doesn't know what to do right we said that most likely this gap that we have seen is not gonna get filled and it's interesting how it came 
to that gap, but it didn't go any below it, right? So there's a high potential that tomorrow the price action might go higher. So what we are creating here, it's almost like a bull flag. If you can just imagine this as a flagpole here, and this would be a flag. Similar over here on the Dow, you have a flagpole right here and you have like so there is a high chance that we're going to go high but what if after the conference there after the announcement there's a conference right and this conference takes about a half an hour after um 11 o'clock uh, which is pacific standard time right which is over there two o'clock in uh, new york um Jerome Powell comes in and start talking and he's saying something that is construed as negative. What would happen in that case? Well, in that case, the market might end up selling off and actually heading lower. And if the market ends up going lower, then what do we have in our case? In our case, we have a situation that we do have uh, that we do have a uh, 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 protection and what is our protection over here it's this and I'm gonna call it this in red the bear put spread so if you now imagine that the market crashes and it's sitting anywhere below the sold unit of the 45 50 uh, what would happen my long put which gives me the right to sell because I have locked the price at 45.55, is going to be $5 in the money. And how much did I pay for the whole thing? I paid for it $4.40. So to make this more, uh, more real, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open the ch chain right here, and I'm gonna fill in this information using the fill price of $17 for the call and the one that we sold above was a 1480 1480 right and then i'm going to work on the put side so i'm going to put it in and just going to show you the risk graph so it's going to become way more clear and feel free to type in the question um, over here in the chat box again you know like uh, uh I just want to make sure that uh, uh, I'm interacting with you um, and you see what is happening here. So the ticker here is uh, carrot sign and uh, SPX. That's going to break up the S&P 500. We are not picking the long call. We're actually picking the um, bull call spread. And obviously when I click here, edit, we will get whatever the uh, automated uh, selection is. So I can go over here to the 26th and I'm picking up exactly what I want. So what I want in this particular situation, I want to be long 45.65 in order to sell the 45.70. So over here is my 45.70 on which I got filled for... Uh, $14.80. So that's the $1,480, right? But on my lower strike price, which is $45.65, I was able to get filled for a $17 even. So when I click this, you would see right here that it says, and I'll just take this as a capture that my whole thing is costing me $2.20. So that's exactly what we were uh, predicting that is going to happen here. So I'm going to put uh, my uh, vocal side on the top uh, that shows the $2.20. So what is a maximum that I can make if I have had only that single spread, not uh, two spreads, but only one spread? Well, it would be the difference of the two. The difference of the two, we can simply click here to the risk graph. And when the risk graph populates, you would see in this case, and I'm going to use the green here to make this a little bit more obvious, that my maximum profit would be $2.80. Now, that assumes 
that the price action would need to go from the current place, which is 4560, 4559.84 because the market is alive, it will need to rally up beyond this strike price of the 4570. So if the price goes into the moon, it doesn't matter. The most that I can earn on this particular bull call spread would be only $280. But the good thing is that all that I risk for it was $2.20. So that would be almost um, like a one-to-one -one trade, right? But that's not what we did because a part of the, plan that i have for tomorrow that we have a long iron condor not the short iron condor but long that's mean we bought the bull call spread and now i'm going to be discussing what are we doing on the bottom part which is uh, my uh, bear put spread that is also out of the money and it's also out of the money because when the price drops from the current price over here that i have circle um, at the time of the entry 4560 right obviously intrinsic value of the unit that i have ended up buying which is a 4555 uh, good to see you i'm glad you're here good morning everyone um you got filled on iron column for 430 that's price improvement in fact what i can see if i can get if i can get the second one for 430 so i'm going to create a duplicate order i'm going to drop it down to 430 and see if i can get the second one for 430 as well so mark uh good to see you in this room i'm having a working order and i got fill at 430 so in that case my profitability is going to be even higher because in that case, when I replicate this and click here, confirm and send, all that I want to point out to you, that maximum profit in this case would be $70. Now, be aware of it. There's a catch to it. We can do a lot of things with this, but I would prefer if you just sit on your hands and you do nothing till the close because the market is going to close either up or down and there's a high chance on a fed day like tomorrow that market is not going to stay flat it's going to be volatile and something is going to move so mark i got the same fill as you did anybody else got the 430 fill um so in this case i have a, a two two uh a set of uh, um long iron condors and when you go over here you would see that in this account under the account statement i have a fill history of the two orders one was for 430 and one was for 440. let's just carry on here with the explanation of adding an additional spread so an additional spread means that i'm going to add the option leg for the same expiry but it's going to be different strike price and the strike price is going to be put and it's going to be 45.50 put. So we're going to have a 45.50 put, but we can't sell that put unless we also buy what? Another put. So in this case, we are buying another put, and that put is in the same cycle, and the price, strike price of that one is going to be 45.55. So I'm going to just now copy whatever the fill prices that I had on my original one. So my $45.55 was $17.20, and my 4550 was a $15. So what I'm doing right now, I'm changing the fill price for my $45.55 to $17.20, and my other one for the $15 even. So now when I click this, okay, what is going to happen here, it's going to give me the shape of the long iron condor. I don't make money if the market stays stuck between the 45.51 and uh, 45.69. That's when I don't make money. 
But knowing that every time when the Fed speaks, there's a tremendous move either to the upside or to the downside. I'm going to just sit on my hands, place this, and do nothing about it. Now, let me just capture this one more time and put it in as a long iron condor uh, in that worksheet. And this worksheet is now having same data as Tinkerswim fill. So if you take a moment and read it from the top to the right, 4565 call, let me just use air so you can see this, 4565 call was filled for the $17. Here's the $17. The lower strike price, maybe I should use red. And the reason why I want to use red, because that's the unit that we are selling. So S stands for selling. So I sold to open this 45.70 for a $14.80. And here's my $14.80 of selling this particular 45.70 call. Similarly, on the put side, I sold 45.55. So here's my sell of the 45.55 for even money, $15. $15 got filled. And then over here, we have a unit that is bought because we can only sell the put if we have a long put in terms of the spread. So that was done for 1720, and here it is 1720 for the strike price. So in this case, I need to do, I don't need to do anything, but just wait. Now be aware of it that there's a couple of things that you can do with this if you choose to. Now the safest bet is to do nothing and just to earn that 13%. And how do we know that it was the 13%? Well, because we simply divided the $440 investment with the profit of the $60. So again, the recap, when I started the session, I said, what we're gonna do is very simple. As long as we invest less than $500, right? we're going to be profitable. So Mark got filled better than what I did at the first batch. I got first batch filled for 440. On the second one, I got filled at the 430. So what is another possibility that you can do? And I have done this before, and I was quite pleased how this could work out. If you are fast enough and you see that market is rallying to the top side, what you can do in that case, you can close the bull call spread while it's rallying. And then when the market pulls down, then you do nothing with your put. And you wait in that case uh, to be completely in the money in amount of whatever, $500, right? Because that's the maximum that you can. So if you can get out on a top side for something more than 220 that you have paid. So let me just now explain this to you, the way how you could do this, right? So what I would do, I would go into my uh, my uh, option here, and I would now set a sell order at 45.65 call and a higher unit 45.70 at the higher price than two dollars and twenty cents, right? So so that's for tomorrow. That's not for today. Of course, now it's even uh, it's even ticking higher. So let's say let's say I just jacked this up for something that I know is not going to get filled today, right? So in this case, I'm exiting for one dollar higher than what I got filled, right? So if I got filled for a two twenty, I'm exiting for three twenty on this side, right? Three twenty, okay? So I send it in. So it's going to be working order, as you can see over here. It's just a working order. It's not going to get filled because the current price on that particular unit is still sitting at $2.35, right? But I have gotten filled on that for the price of the what? $2.20. So think about it. If you can shave additional $100 on the top, and when the market goes down, right, after the, let's say, assuming, and this is a big word I'm using here. Assuming that at 11 o'clock, they increase the interest rate by a quarter of percent, which is, because that's already given. That's that's right here, forecasted. That's, that's not the news, right? 
And then over here, half an hour later, right, they start saying something bad. But initially, at 11 o'clock, they increase on the quarter percent in market rallies and you get out of your call spread. And then Fed chair gets in front of everybody and start talking. Uh, whatever he says, it can be construed positive or negative. You know, that's that's the thing, you know, like we cannot we cannot predict whether or not certainly he's going to say good or bad is how is that going to be perceived and market then start tanking so in that case you can actually make more than that right so how would you then figure out what is exactly that you made so let's just assume okay let's just assume that you have an outcome like this right that your your call spread is exited at 320 and originally we paid for it uh, entry was uh, 220 so we have earned here hundred dollars right and then the market tanks and when it tanks you still need to figure out you know whether or not you want to touch it in my opinion as long as it goes below the 4550 don't touch it wait till this is completely five dollars in the money so if it's a five dollars in the money, you just need to be aware of it that instead of making on a on a put spread, making two twenty, right? You might end up making like five hundred. So when you make a five hundred and subtract that, what would you be making? Well, you would be making difference of the two, which is not a difficult math, right? which in that case would be 500 minus 220, you would make 280 plus additional $100 that you picked up on the top side. So that would be 380 that you made with the investment of the $500. Now again, that requires, I shouldn't say skill, that requires a volatility. And is there a high chance that we're going to have a volatility tomorrow? Yes or no? Yes or no? Feel free to type it in. And I answer it, we will not have any volatility till 11 o'clock. It's at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, or I mean Pacific Standard Time, or the 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. That's when the fireworks starts. And normally what it happens in those days, that when the fireworks starts, the price action just simply go wild. It goes to the upside. It goes to the downside. It's just, it's, just, it's just unbelievable, you know. Like it's every single time when you have something like that, the price action always surprises everybody, right? So what it could happen, it's very simple that uh, that you a do nothing and you're happy with earning whatever the seventy dollars or sixty dollars just by sitting at your hand, which is very conservative. Uh, 13 percent in a day uh, or you can get active you can get active and then you can try to uh, you can then try to uh, manage it now managing it can be tricky because what about if you exit one and it doesn't reverse and it keeps on going higher and higher and higher and you are now in pain because of the simple fact that you thought that you know better than the market but the market actually uh, kind of threw you a curveball and at the end uh, you weren't able to completely uh, get back even the original investment that can really be the case so I have a here something I'm going to share with you and I'm going to just copy it and throw it back in a Word document that I have created here. This is a this is a Fed day. This is a Fed day of uh, if you can look at here May 3rd. That was a May 3rd. Now if you're like, "Oh, I don't remember what happened on the May 3rd." Well, one of the things that you can do is you can use a calendar over here and just travel back in time to May 3rd and to see what happened. So this is June, this is May, and this is a May 3rd. So when you click on this, uh, you have a 
information what happened on that day. So let me just go back here one more time. June, May, I click here, May 3rd. Okay, so now, now I'm seeing what is happening on the May 3rd. So if you look at right here, I can do it this way. This is June, this is March, this is May. So what happened? In the May, did they increase the interest rate? Yes, they did. Now let's look at what what was the behavior of the market prior to 11 o'clock or 2 o'clock Eastern. Okay, I can talk about this. It did absolutely nothing. Then when 11 o'clock came, did we have a whipsa effect that this particular bar right here that you're looking rip to the upside and then it came right back down of course on the nasdaq that was a little bit more pronounced right because it has rallied for uh, about a half an hour right each of these bars is 10 minutes and then after jerome paul was done talking the market completely what sold off to the downside and when it sold off to the downside that's where your put side has made killing right so in this case your calls could have been exited somewhere here at the high if you were watching this at the one minute bars if you were watching this at the one minute bars and i'm going to bring actually not the one minute bar i'm going to bring the hourly for that same day which is may 5th because i was trading that day same strategy that i'm teaching you and as you can see over here what i'm showing you this is a s p 500 and this blue line well actually this gray section let me just explain this to you uh without rushing anything is an overnight session so in this overnight session what i usually do i mark overnight session low and i mark overnight session high and because this is the hourly chart as you can see right here um this particular bar it's kind of inconsistent because it starts six and it closes at seven so the thinkorswim platform doesn't even know how to look at it but notice over here there's a wick here that's mean if we had a bull call spread let, let's say back then the prices were at a different level than today they were at the 4140 okay they were at 4140 um, as you as you can see just by looking to the left right if, you, if you're looking right here to the left you see how the price is right here 4140 okay did that rally all the way up to 4165 so if you just did that strategy like even with using the strike prices such as buying to open 40 41 uh let's say 50 and having a higher strike price of 4160 you would get more than two dollars and 20 cents to the upside now let me just clean this of all these things and show you what did market do at the end it completely tanked additional 30 points lower so make sure if you're managing this particular trade be aware of it that put you should not touch if you should take something off most likely it should be the call side. Okay, let me read this question. Yosef, could we do this on the Russell 2000 or on the NASDAQ? Okay, I didn't, I didn't talk about this yet, but let's, let's entertain that question. Let's entertain that question. Thank you for asking me that question, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look into it. I, I really want to see whether or not we can do that. So we're going to do the same kind of procedure. The biggest thing is to find out whether those two indices have an expiry for a July 23rd, uh, July 26th, right? It's, it's very important that we know that because over here I have a July 26th. Okay, so I'm going to type in NDX here and see. Mm -hmm.
and dx. It's loading up. Just need to wait a little bit. It has it. The only problem that I have that the volume and open interest suck. And look, look at look at how wide the bid and ask spread is. This this is what is a little bit concerning for me. I mean, just just to kind of encapsulate these out of the money strike prices that I'm looking at. Um, I, I haven't done it on the Nasdaq to be honest, but I'm glad you're interacting with me and asking me a question. So we're now entertaining a long iron condor on the NDX. An objection that I see that the spread is so wide. It's like we're talking about basically $4 spread. $3.20 and over here $3.60. But if you're, yeah, but look at this. Is this a $5 spread or a $10 spread? So in this case, you would need to do a $1,000 investment. Yeah, but Yosip, if you do the thousand dollar up, thousand dollar down. Okay, okay. Let, let let's just entertain this. Let's just entertain this. Okay. So, if I use a kind of same concept that I did up there, which means we have a call and we have a put, right? And if this is now fifteen thousand, and it's probably five four. I don't know. Let's say, let's say, let's say that's the current price of the of the Nasdaq. Let, let's just assume that's the current price of the Nasdaq. And I like to color the current price uh, for simple reason that I have a point of reference. So we're buying to open. BTO stands for buying to open. This fifteen thousand five hundred and fifty call, and then. We don't have a $5 spread, but what we have is a $10 spread. So then in that case, I would need to do 1560 calls. So that's already invested. This, this, this bull call spread, it's a 1K wide. All right, so that, that, that's already kind of not something that excites me so then what would i do on this side well then i would need to pick 1530 as a put and of course that would be buying to open okay we're gonna price this you know i don't wanna i don't wanna say no to something but i'm glad you're interacting here with me so i can entertain this possibility and i really say entertain without meaning anything bad about it so could i get this for let's say Eight hundred dollars out of thousand dollars. Well, let's try. Let's try. I mean, we don't have a certainty till we proceed. So I'm pricing. Well, now the price has already moved. The prices have already moved. Um, I'll um, I'll then uh, still uh, I'll then still still do what. Uh, what I said I'm going to do. But, but you see, this, this is, if this is not poking your eyes, then I, I don't know what else should. Volume, not available. You're going to be swimming in that swimming pool by yourself. And over here, look, not available. But tomorrow it might be available. Yeah, but just be aware of it because of the fact that nobody else is trading these things. This is a $3 wide. This is a, but yeah, okay, let's just price it. Let's just price it. I mean, the logic that I'm trying to lay down here for all of you who are present here is based on the fact that what we need to do is just pick a lower strike price and a higher strike price. If this is a 15,540, the higher strike price would be 10 points higher, 15,550. Same to the downside. Okay. Now, of course, since I typed these numbers, could it be that the market move? Well, we are trading the living market. We're not trading. Well, it's only moved two dollars, so it's actually. I can alter this. Let's let's just alter this. Let's just alter this. Let's make this in a sixty, because that's what currently market is. 
So then in this case, I would be picking here 50, and I would be picking here 40, and I better do this fast. And over here on the top side, this would be the 70, and this would be the 80, okay? So if you're good with this, let me just ask you here, are you following me? Feel free to interact with me. If you're not following me, I'm going to slow down. So basically, what I'm trying to do, either 10 points higher or 10 points lower. Okay, it's still there. It, it breed down like $1. So let's price it. Let's price it. So I'm buying a vertical. They want a $4.55. Do, 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 do you already see the problem with that? You know, Because what I'm going to get on the top side, Four dollars and fifty-five cents. Also, ten dollars and five cents. I want everybody to look at this. The reason why we can do this. Okay, now it changed to nine fifty-five. Now it changed to ten fifteen. The whole spread is only worth. Okay, if I, you see, it's too much money for a too little game. It, it just doesn't. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense. So to answer your question, no. No. When would I do it? If I got something around the 800. And what was originally when I pulled it up? They wanted $10 for it. They wanted $10 for it, but $10 times 100 would be 1,000. And a whole spread is $1,000. It, it, just, it just, I mean, of course, in the paper trading account, you can fire this in, you know, like, and you would, you would get something. I'm not even sure if they're going to fill you on this. You see, now they want a 985. No, let's 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 answer the other part of that question that you had for me. Have you tried that on the rut? Yes. Uh, so let's now look at the rut. Now be aware of it. Same procedure applies for a rut. What's the first step we need to look at? First step that we need to look at is the rut having July 26 expiry. So ready? So we're pulling up the rut, July 26 expiry, perfect. Oh, they have an everyday expiry, that's not true. Because look, what's the one thing that you're noticing? They don't have a Tuesdays and Thursdays. It just happened that tomorrow is Wednesday and that Fed Day is Wednesday. It, 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 it just happened. That's, 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 that's something that you need to be aware of, that sometimes these things happen. So when I go over here on the calendar and I travel back in time to that May 3rd, it also happened to be a Wednesday. And it was on May 3rd that I was showing how wild the price action was. So you shouldn't have done anything in the morning at all. So you start looking at the market at 11. Mark, is that good? Don't look at the market tomorrow till 11 o'clock. Go walk the dog. Even if you don't have a dog, just go walk in a park or something like that. And then come back at 11 and watch the fire show. fireworks, right? Because you see how the tight price action is? It's nothing, 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 nothing. And then it starts moving. It starts moving, right? So, so just, just be aware of it that that's most likely what the situation is going to be tomorrow and it's wednesday you see you also is it always a wednesday okay so let me let me pull up another day of the fed okay uh, i kind of track these things quite another fed day was uh this is june 14 but i'm not sure uh, that must be of the last year you know luckily i have that information here june 14 of the last year just give me a second. I'm going to pull up the June 14 of the last year information because uh, that's just before I went to Europe. And I know I was trading that June 14 of the last year. Um, actually, it was a June 15, believe it or not. It was a Fed day of the June 15 of the last year. It was also Wednesday. Yeah, it was also Wednesday. Just, just give me a second. I'm going to pull it up and show it to you what really happened on that day. So this is a year ago. This is a year ago. And um, 
and I'm gonna now uh, travel back in time a whole year so you see this is May and this is now June and this is 15 so, so, so notice I, I want you all to be aware of it I'm talking about now what happened a year ago June 15 coincidentally it happened to be Wednesday okay and what did they do with the interest rates well they jacked it up they jacked it up back then it was one and a half and they jacked it up to what 1.75 they jacked it up to 1.75 so let me now dump into this particular one just give me a second here I have too many things to open um, what happened another example another example this is a uh, May 3rd so we already talked about that so let's not talk about that anymore uh, this is a year ago okay so this was a May 5th so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna put here June of the last year and, and notice similarity what did the market do up to 11 o'clock? What, what did the market do? Nothing. Chop, 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 chop. So when I say you can go for a walk, that thing holds the truth ever since 2006 when I actually started trading the Ben Bernanke's announcement back then. There's nothing. Don't, don't expect anything. Go, go, go see a movie, you know, Spirit of Freedom or whatever, you know, like do something, you know. And, and notice, did the market go down? And did it then reverse and go up? Okay? But that was a different environment a year ago versus now. So, so, so one thing that we have with certainty, that if you do nothing, if you just sit on your hand and do nothing, the, the market most likely is not going to close at the same price that it opened. Yeah? Okay, so let's now fire the trade in the rut it's a little bit easier to do it on the rut than on anything else because we do have a at least double digit volume over here we have a triple digit I, I, I like it I like it so let's let's click out of the money 1975 1980 right okay let's let's be consistent I really want to be consistent I don't want to surprise anybody with what I'm doing, so I'm going to do consistently on the rut. So we're now working the rut, the same system that we did the NASDAQ and concluded we can do. So we are currently sitting at, uh, what was that, 19, 1970. Yeah, okay, let, let's, let's round it up to 1970. I, I know it's 1971 or whatever, you know. But in this case, we're going to be then buying to open 1975, and we would need to be then selling the higher unit, which is only $5 higher, 1980. Okay, on, on the other side, I can just pick the 1970 because it's just one dollar out of the money on a put side just one dollar out of the money on a put side and then i can do um selling to open 1965 put again i want this to be less than 500 the closer i get to 400 the more happy i am ready so let me roll it up here so you can better see. Out of the money, buying a vertical, $2.30. $2.20 would be better. On this side, buy vertical, $4.25. Okay, that's not bad. Let's fire it in, see if I get filled. I mean, we have about 12 minutes left in the session, so I think I will get filled. Bingo. So we got filled. 
right here. By, by the way, this is a paper trading account, so I want all of you to be aware of it. Uh, whether or not we got filled, it did not affect these numbers. If this was a real trade. This is the 36 contracts, and this is a 452. This is a real trade. This would become 37, and this would become 453. And on this side, from a 37, this would become 38. This would become a 31 if this was a real trade, because volume is in real time. It's in real time. Now, you can make argument that somebody did the lower one, 1965-1960, but they did it 30 times. That that that's very much possible. But let's let's be consistent what we are doing here. Let, let, let's really be consistent, right? So we're placing a long iron condor for four dollars and twenty cents. Although I was willing to buy it for what? For four twenty-five. So you're like, well, why does it say here four twenty-five? When it over here, it says uh, BOT 420. I got what it's called, price improvement. What do you mean by that? Well, take a look. I was willing, I was willing to buy it for 425, but I got it for 420. So that's mean on this one, I can make $80. So one more time, if I'm making $80 on investment, of the four hundred and twenty dollars, nineteen percent. Whoa, that's even better than S and P. Yeah, but I haven't tested that. You notice that for S and P, did I go back in time? Did I pull it up? Did I show it to you? How did the price go and this and that? For for this particular information, I I, I, I just I just couldn't. You know, like I just couldn't because I don't, I haven't traded that till I read your question that you said, hey, you know, what about whatever, you know. So when I said, okay, you know, like that's the case, you know, like we can take a look at it and, and see what is going on, you know, but be aware of it that uh, every time when the market is uh, moving, you, you need to have a plan. I mean, you're coming to the market prepared. What do you want to do with it? What do you want to do with it? Did anybody else got filled, Mark? Did you get filled at the same price that I did, uh, which is a $4.20? Yes, yes. Thank you, whoever is asking this question. This is a question that person says, do you put this trade the day before the Fed announcement? Yes. Yes, I do. Because that day, I don't even look at the market till 11 o'clock. I start looking at 11. Why, why would I look at it before 11? It's irrelevant. And what this, what this thing does for me, oh, Mark, you got filled at 420. Then perfect, right? Perfect. That, that, I'm, I'm glad you did. And... Uh, we know that you did in the paper trading account because the, these numbers are still the same as the ones that I captured. Good, 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 good. Um, let, let me tell you advantage, Mark, of doing this. Uh, if the account is less than $25,000 and you put that day before, the next day you exiting the, of those trades doesn't count as a day trade because it's not that day entry. You enter it from a day before. So when do you put it? Well, obviously, you don't put it at 8.52, you know. You start putting this trade maybe 10 minutes before the market closes. And I, I prefer to do the 10 minutes before the market closes because then only thing that I have is just overnight risk. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to be aware of it, that what I'm talking here is that this market can still go against me. You, you see, like I was saying to you that NASDAQ gap is not going to get filled and probably you were saying at that point, he doesn't know what he's talking about. If that thing had the strength, he wouldn't stop at the top of the gap. It would just go what? Right through it. And look what the Dow did. The Dow was bull flagging and now again creating the new flagpole and probably is going to have another what? Flag right here. So you see... You placing this thing right now versus you placing it here before 4 o'clock p.m. market makes a huge difference. But again, you know, I'm going to finish this session in now in five minutes and there, there won't be there won't be uh, anything else that we can do about it. I mean, think, think about this, you know, like, although this thing looks big, 
it's a percentages please always look at the percentages this is up 0.3 percent nasdaq that yesterday or thursday fell down 400 points is now moving only 0.06 percent 0.02 percent i mean let's let's look at the fangman and t you know fangman stands for well, facebook it's no longer facebook you know so they're now meta okay so let's see what the meta is doing meta is well it's the, i mean you can't call it downtrend you know like i mean for a simple reason that it's not downtrend but um, it's having a pullback amazon what's amazon doing S same same chart last several sessions breeding um apple what's apple doing here apple is actually sideways apple is from the three of them that we looked at it's the strongest fangman and t uh, netflix netflix no netflix is in the, well i can't call the downtrend but it gapped down and it's having lower how about nvidia oh when you see the gap in the video you know like a, you would know a lot of people lost a lot of money because they were assuming all the gap must get filled yeah in your lifetime or in someone else's lifetime all the gaps need to get filled okay let's imagine that you're short and you went there and shorted at 350. how do you feel now when this thing rallied up here to 475. Market can stay irrational longer than you can be sold. So just be aware of it. Okay, let's look at the Tesla. Fangman plus T. Oh, we need to look at the Microsoft too. Is it Microsoft? Yeah, Microsoft is up three bucks. Yeah, but you know, like it had like how many days back to back down? It had a number of days back. And uh, Tesla. Uh, TSI. Don't, don't put the E in yeah you know still before the end of the day we, we we this this doesn't look to me very convincing if this was really green then everybody would let the video green there's a lot of indecision look at the financial financials are not even up financials are in red so anyway you know like the day before the feds uh i mean i don't want to use the same line that i said before you know walk the dog even if you don't have a dog i mean you can still trade something you know just be aware of it that uh, the firework really starts tomorrow so let's see any other question so what is your final conclusion about the rut well you, you could do it if it falls on wednesday if if the feds come up on thursday i think they spoke sometimes on thursday i don't know i would need to look at all the statistics you know it's just the two or three of them that i looked at it happened to be on wednesday um, then you can do it, you know. I mean, uh, this kind of thing. Uh, so, so the Fed speak every about six weeks. This is not a, a, a tactic that you can do like every single day. You, you need to wait for like six six weeks before you can do something like that. But um, I wouldn't do on the Netflix. So to answer your question, because the original question was there about the RAT and about the Nasdaq. Um, yes, RAT if it falls on wednesday nasdaq it, it just i mean like we can revisit one more time but just just be aware of it uh even if i revisit okay so look what i'm gonna do i'm gonna actually change it to uh, to open interest and open interest is also low so, so at multiple levels at the multiple levels, I suggest to you, don't do it. So, long iron condor only loses money when it stays in this tight range of whatever that is, like 4 or $5. And as long as it goes above or it goes below, you're making your maximum profit. And in this case, we risk $440. And my maximum profit is $60. We calculate that's about 13%. On, uh, on the other one that we placed, uh, which is a uh, rut, we actually got even better price, right? So take a look. I mean, just looking at these numbers, $4.20, $4.30, $4.40. The worst possible trade was the 13%. The best possible trade is this one, which is like more than 19%.
So, so the rat turn out to be the best fill if if this is a, if this is a case if this is a case so one more time let's revisit the chart over here and talk a little bit about the big picture what has happened um, with uh, with uh, majors so I like to finish on a monthly basis discussing you know, what's the, each of these market doing right so I used to use this uh, February of the last year as a line of demarcation saying uh, it has acted for a long time as a, a resistance and then when we broke above it it acted as a support 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 now we have a new target ladies and gentlemen we are going for a high but that's the case of the Dow please be aware of it that's not the way how the Nasdaq is the Na Nasdaq is almost already there so jumping in right now you're a late comer into the game because usually after such a big rally up, there's going to be two or three months of the what? Of the nothingness. And we're still in the summertime, July, August. So don't, don't, like if you didn't get long by now in terms of investment, it, it doesn't make sense to get in at this point. Now look at the rut, you know, like I know SPY and uh, Dow are very, very similar and I need to finish here in one minute. But I want to show you how far off, how, how much lagging in comparison to everybody else Russell is. So this is that February of uh, last year when the war started overseas. And it's just this month that we broke above. Just, just finally, like if the market closes the way it is, it's going to be up. Now, be aware of it. What happened last time when we closed in that area? We came right back below. So, things are not rosy out there. So, if you don't have any question, I wish you good luck. And I won't see you the next month. I'm going to Europe. I'm going to see you um, following month. So, all the best. And have a good trading session. Bye.